Hello guys, Louis here and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, every single day I have countless amounts of trains going past my window. I mean, I mean, look at the view. The, it's not ideal. Let's, let's not lie. It's not an ideal view for most people, but I quite like it. I quite like seeing all this different graffiti on the side of these trains. I think it's quite cool and quite interesting and uh, I'm genuinely excited to see like these mad designs that pop up every day. So if you look at this one, this is this is a classic view. This is my bedroom view, except from on this one, all that graffiti is mine. So I turn it off, turn it on again. That's all my graffiti. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to create sort of a realistic graffiti effect with a little bit of spray, a little bit of splatter. I'm also gonna show you how you can mock this up on a surface, so the side of a train or a wall or a bit of paper, whatever you want, and how you can get those textures to sort of come through a bit um, so it looks a lot more realistic. I'm hoping to create a lot more videos at the moment, so yeah, give it a little like. Give it a little subscribe and that'll be sweet. Anyway, let's get into the video. So the first thing we're gonna do is open a new document. For this, the spray splatter effect is gonna go based off of pixels. So it's better to have a larger canvas. The file size will be quite small when you export it anyway. So it's better to start off with a larger canvas size, but obviously you've got your own logos and your own graphics. You can just drop it in anyway, so all good. So I'm just gonna create a 6,000 by 6,000 document at 300 DPI and your color mode, depending on whether you're gonna print it or not, I'm not gonna print it, so I can stick mine in RGB. So for today's video, I'm going to be working off the Stussy logo or the Stussy logo. I don't know. Depends where you are, I guess, how you say it. Tato tomatoes, as they say. Obviously, dropping your graphics, you can do your text or whatever it is, but just make sure you convert it to a smart object. So this is already a smart object, which is fine. So the first step, what we're going to want to do is go to our object, click on it, and then we're going to want to go to the blending modes and just go down to dissolve. It's the first one underneath there. And what this will do is it will, you won't be able to see much yet, but you'll see that the edges are starting to roughen up a little bit. What this does is any sort of gradient, it will just turn to an on or off pixel kind of has that gritty grainy effect so once we've done that just make sure our vector object is selected go up to filter blur gallery and fill blur so this is the fill blur options menu now what fill blur allows you to do is select different parts of an image and blur it in sort of different amounts so instead of just doing one sort of blur over the whole image this allows you to pick sort of areas and blur it however much you want and because we've got this dissolve effect on it however much we're going to blur it is going to create more of like this pixelated grainy spray effect so it should automatically pin the first one for you on the artboard if not you can simply just click where you want and it will pin one for you basically the first one is going to be a general blur amount so this first pin will decide how much blur goes over the whole image so you can either choose this to be like a large amount like this like as you can see it is fully gritty and blurry which looks very great or you can have it just a little amount for the first one i recommend just having a little spray amount because this is going to be our base coat basically our base layer of spray so we want the edges to be a little bit gritty and grainy to make it look like it's been sprayed but not too intense so and because this is our base layer we can move this one just off the artboard these pins work anywhere on the artboard and off the artboard Board. because this one is a general one we can move it to the side now the second pin that you put down will start being directional and it will start playing with a certain area so if i put another pin down here you can either use this slider up on the right hand side or you can literally click round in the circle to do it whilst you're down here this pin is basically going to be depending on where it is placed so and again you can move this off the artboard so i'm going to move it down to the bottom right so as if this last sort of spray on this logo has sort of uh, come away from the stencil a little bit basically you can up the level and drag it in and out to sort of decide how much of an area you want it to spray now it's starting to mess with the rest of the shape which i don't want so i can move it a little bit further out like so so now it's only affecting this area here i'm also going to do these areas here as you can see it is starting to play with the whole shape of it what you can do is just place one in the middle of your object and uh, make sure that the blur is low and that will sort of make the whole design so it won't be too blurring it won't be affected every time you put a pin down it won't do it on too much of the uh, too much of the design so these little middle bits here you can move it around anywhere so i'm going to leave this here i kind of want the main area to be pretty clean and then i can go ahead up here add another pin and make that quite blurry as well and obviously this is going to start really affecting the side of the design but because these two are set to low this is going to make sure that these two are sort of pinned to a less blurry state which is good so you see here it's like proper blending out which is like really quite nice but i think just having it in a few areas is a bit more effective than having it over the whole thing you still want to be able to have your design as being quite readable so naturally when you're spraying and you're moving further away it will have these areas that are a little bit more sort of not blurred but like there's a bit more of a gradient than uh, like these center areas where you're a little bit more close and direct so feel free to play around uh, with this as much as you want make 
some areas really intense, make some areas nice and clean, but really just sort of play with the edges. I think it's better when you have those sort of trails coming off where it looks a lot more realistic. So, and again, with this tool, you can create as many pins as you want. So you can really get in there as detailed as you want and sort of be quite selective about the areas that you want to be quite blurry. So I'm really liking this bit here being quite blurry at the bottom. Yeah, I think I'm happy with all my pins right now. This is looking pretty good. It looks a little bit more realistic as if it's been sprayed rather than just this sort of clean vector that we started with. So once you're happy with this, I mean, you can go back at any point in time and change any of these, move any of these, any of these pins that you're like, oh, actually, I want to change this. You can just click on it. It'll bring the options back up again. It is quite a flexible little tool here that I've never really used that much before, but for this, absolutely perfect. And yeah, so once you're happy, you can just go ahead and click OK and it will save it for you. It is vital at every point that it's loading or, you know, you finish a step that you just have a little bit of your drink especially if it's a Friday. So once that's done loading, you will find that you've just got your object here and it's completely isolated, which means you can turn the background off or drop in whatever color background, whatever sort of background you want, and it will be completely isolated on its own layer. So it's quite easy to work with, which means we can export it as a PNG or a PSD, and then we can drop it into whatever files we want. We can drop it onto a poster, we can drop it onto a texture, whatever you want to do, it's there nice as a PNG. So one quick step, one thing I like to add actually is, obviously this is quite solid through the middle of this shape. The grain is all on the outside which it, it does look nice it does look clean but to take this one step further and what you can do to sort of make this look like a little bit more like it's been sprayed is just create a little layer mask and then what you can do is grab your brush tool make sure it's a, a nice soft brush i'm going to make sure that the brush is a little bit bigger and change the opacity down to maybe like 15 percent and make sure you're selected on your layer mask so what you can do here is just go over the top and sort of add a little bit of a blurry texture into it which is going to then dissolve make it look like the paint splatters are sort of unfinished if you zoom out it's a little bit more realistic than on the bottom like say some areas are not completely perfect like the paint is running out a little bit but you can up the opacity or lower the opacity and change the size of your brush to just go in there into some of these areas and sort of mask out some little bits of grain so it doesn't look as perfect and clean and it looks a little bit more natural a little bit more sprayed yeah it looks pretty good so i'm just going to save this as a psd because i'm going to be working in photoshop again and i can just drag that straight in so yeah i'm going to save this as a psd and then i'm going to jump into the next file so i've just opened up this psd document feel free to drag in any text you want any image you want that you want to kind of mop this up on could be a wall could be a train whatever this is the image that i had at the start of the video and this is what i see when i look out my window i know what you're thinking glamorous but yeah this is just the train or the side of a train carriage that was outside my window this morning uh, so what i'm going to do now is just drag my logo on top and i'm going to show you how to mock it up so it looks like it's sat on the side of that texture so i'll just drag mine in here and i'll just press tick so the first thing to do is to try and always match whatever your document is with your logo like if your logo is nice and polished and clean and super high quality and it's on like a sort of blurry background of something you've taken the side of a building whatever it's going to automatically look fake because you want to sort of match the same amount of blur and the same amount of noise as your background so it's always good to zoom in and just check and see how blurry and noisy your image is compared to your background this is now actually a little bit blurry it's fine but what i'm going to do actually is just go filter blur gaussian blur and just blur my design just a little bit not enough for it to kind of lose the gradient but just a little bit so it matches the background a little bit more and you can see the pixels here and you can compare them so that's good there and i'm also going to just filter noise add a bit of noise add a little bit of grain a little bit more grit into it not too much it's already got a lot in there but i want to just sort of match the background pixels i think that's pretty good there i'm going to leave that now to blend this in with the background so i did in my last video I just used the blending options on here it was just a really quick way of doing it but whenever you're mocking up something with a bit more texture in the background and you kind of want those like as you can see in the middle of this image there's these shadows and darker bits on the side of these sort of rivets here this is going to look fake until it sort of sits on those things so the best way to do this and the easiest way to do it is avoid any of these blending options because they're not going to make it look realistic if you just give it a little right click go to blending options up here you will see here on these sort of blending options here you have these two little sliders at the bottom one will control the blending options of this actual text relative to itself and the bottom layer will basically depend on the image that's below it so we want to sort of mock this up as if it's on this image so we can work with this slider here so as you can see it's got like a little uh, line down the middle which means it can be split so what you can do is just option click and it will split the slider next to each one. Uh, I think on Windows this is Alt, uh, but I'm not sure, but give it a little try. But this will mean the blending is not as harsh, you can sort of soften it a little bit. And as you drag these up and down, you can see it's starting to bring the texture of the background through on the image above. So because this is a white image on a dark background, we wanna work with the darks here. 
and see how much of this we actually want to come through. I don't mind mine being a little bit washed out here. I quite like that effect. I want it to look like it's been a bit weathered. Again, you can sort of move these up and down. The light's not going to really do much here because the background is quite dark. So, but that would be for your highlights as well. But this isn't going to really do much for us because we're working on a quite dark background. So let's just play with these a little bit. And again, this is going to be different for whatever your design is and whatever your background is. You can just move these sliders up and down and sort of get a more natural effect. Make it look like it's sort of sat on the side of that train. Like so, obviously here it's a little bit wrong because some of my design has gone onto these leaves here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna grab my pen or your mouse, whatever you wanna do, grab your brush, create a little mask, mask out any of these areas that are on the top of anything that's in the foreground. So I'm just gonna mask out any of this. So when you zoom out, as you can see, it looks quite realistic. It looks like it's been sprayed and the blending mode is making that look like it's actually sat on that texture. So if I woke up and saw that in the morning, you would think that that was a picture taken out my bedroom window, which is fantastic. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Very simple, quick and easy to do. It's just one of those things I saw and was like, oh, I actually think that's quite cool. So I decided to make a little tutorial on it. But I think it looks quite effective and quite realistic. And hopefully, yeah, you, you've learned from this and you can sort of mock up your own sort of graffiti effects on the side of trains or walls or whatever. But yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you again very soon with a new video. Uh, so stay safe and uh, I'll catch you later.